Some may find the following disturbing. Discretion is advised. Sad news in the NFL and that Tony Soprano suddenly passed away at the age of 56. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Adrian Amos has played in 44 NFL games. He has started 40 of them. Anybody got a guess as to how many fumbles he's forced in 40 NFL starts? Three. <laughs> three? Yeah. He's forced uh, three fumbles in his career. He's recovered two fumbles. Well, I need and, more. I need yeah. much more than that. Why don't you get the fuck out of here before I shove your quotations book up your fat fucking ass? <laughs> Another guy that is starting to have a nice positive start to training camp, and that's Kevin White. He has had that positive of training camps in the past. I think you've seen some positivity and some excitement about what he's doing, but it sounds like to me that this is maybe just a, a slight step ahead of where we've seen him in the past. Well, speaking of improving performance, I want to tell you about our friends over at Blue Chew. Blue Chew can help you increase your performance. I had a dream I fucked your brains out. Right on that dead. Uh, how different without giving away specifics are, are, are things in the run game with this new offense? Are angles different? Are techniques with Harry? Hypotenuse is still a hypotenuse, and uh, inside zone is still inside zone, so until they change that, we'll be okay. That's the biggest, uh, that's the biggest angle on a triangle, guys. <laughs> hypotenuse. Yeah, you must have been at the top of your fucking class. I think the best thing for the Bears is if Kush beats him out because Kush played very well in 2016 before he got hurt in 17. Let Daniels learn the position, let him spend time in the weight room, let him develop the kind of body you need to be an NFL offensive guard because very much to Bob's point, I'm not disputing that he can be a Pro Bowl guard. I, I, I don't know. He's a very talented kid, um, but, but he doesn't look like it yet. And so I think they've got a lot of work to do with him. It's undermined, and it's the kind of stuff I'm teaching my kids not to do. So I don't want to hear it again. End of subject. Na na na. Our players gon' room. They're the ones that fight for truth. Bears our live or a hundred proof. Even if the bears win or lose. Our players gon' room. They're the ones that fight for truth. Bears our live or a hundred proof. No matter if the Bears win or lose Yo, first, the smartest man, no tweets, he's never missing Impossible, the mission, call out frauds with precision My Bears 100 proof, these days is number one is Dora Slaying dumb tweets, cross eyed like Katora Never one to back down, to call a fraud a lemon Waz, Ram, no doubt, Miller's asterisk ending Cheers, Bears fans The fire Puerto Rican bar, keep it for Chicago land He's the godfather, the one, the real producer Always keeping the show together with the voice that will seduce us Risking now the fire fox, the old timer never stops IPA draft, small scraps, bar keep tasting shots. No Bar flies appreciated worldwide. Canada, Scotland, England, Brazil, Mexico, and Dubai. Dr. Phil is the guy, the one to realize that the bar room needed to show more than endless shoot supply. Go big go for the narrative on color brought the Jaces of Gabe from Mitchell. Now I'm the Ashan. Enough for the truth. You know your boy's a little guy. These media heads won't give us credits up to the bar flies. Flies. Flies, 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 Fuck a fraud in his keyboard with a tough guy surround us Raining truth on the Bears worldwide bar flies us down This us. is the number one pod, that's the reality of the truth And if you don't know us by now Bears, Bears 100 proof Our Bears born room They're the ones that fight for truth the guys were able to get out there and, and uh, have, a, have a series of uh, live short yardage goal line I thought was great uh, always coming back from a day off like they had, it's usually a little sluggish, so we as coaches were a little prepared for that. Um, but I thought the guys handled it well. Uh, they, it's, uh, when you have that extra day from the install, you tend to forget a little bit of, of what the details are of the plays. But for the most part, they tried, they did, a, they did well with it, and uh, I thought the offense did really well in the live short yardage goal line. And then I thought the defense came out on seven on seven, got some turnovers, some interceptions, along with the team period. And um, so it's a positive for both groups. Uh, Mitch with a, had, had a couple interceptions today. The, the best part about that was the next play, he came back with a completion. And so you're, we're growing in that process. He's testing the waters along with the other quarterbacks. This is Bears 100 Proof. That was Bears head coach, Matt 
Nagy evaluating the practice from Thursday, July 26. And while things are certainly not perfect, the coach sounds optimistic about the team's progress in all three phases. My name is Aldo Gandia, and it is my fault our show was delayed a couple of days as I was under the weather, but I'm back behind the bar serving the drinks, and don't you worry, the stars of this nightclub act are here, and they are, of course, Shane, the smartest man in the bar room, Marceau, and draft doctor, Philotoshin. And you know, Beers Girl is here in the best seat of the house as she's scouring the internet for breaking news and Lord knows what else. I think we've got our usual features ready for action and maybe a surprise. I don't know exactly what's going on because I've been sick, but we know this. We've got some smart football talk ahead of us, a few laughs, and we're bound to piss someone off. Fellas, how are you doing? Starting with you, Shane. I'm doing pretty good. Just uh, started the coffee pot because i got to leave for work in about 32 minutes as we record it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just start my day a little bit earlier for you Bears fans out there. But yeah, it's all good. Phil, <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm excited. The pads are on. People are hitting. Adrian Amos, I mean, just talk about setting the tone as we're talking about him on Bears Hour Live, the very next practice amos goes out there and fucking absolutely patents his presence and that gets me fired up for football because let's face it so far in camp they're like playing two-hand touch but to see today them going live credit our monday's guest for giving us again some great footage And also uh, Ryan Heckman and Zeke, Barflies represent giving people across the world a little peek into training camp. And it just continues to get me excited, Aldo. I couldn't wait to get on this show. I know we got big things coming and that stuff got me excited as well, but. I'm ready to do 100 proof. I've been getting so many DMs. When the fuck is 100 proof coming? <laughs> Shane's like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> You're so fucking excited. <laughs> so we are back. And it's fucking football season. Fucking soccer. And AJ went out the fucking window. And we are back to talking (laughs) Bears football. I'm excited, man. We got a lot to get into. We do have a lot. And we had a lot uh, prior to the beginning of our recording session. We had a a team meeting with all the principals here. And we've got some exciting news that we're going to announce next week and we've got an exciting season oh, yeah. ahead and and what was best about that uh, team meeting is that bears girl led the meeting and she was a ball buster man she kept us <laughs> she kept us in line ball washer ball washer <laughs> no 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 the canadian vixen <laughs> I've been with you guys almost a year now there is no ball washing here wait when's the anniversary of your homecoming um, well, I think we've got to define when, when I actually officially joined, because I didn't officially join as on air until January, I think it was, when Aldo got sick, but I joined as VP International Relations at some point, I think it was <laughs> end of October, beginning of November. So yeah. I, I, I hated BG almost a full year ago. I know, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So uh, Shane is brewing coffee. I just put on my Bears pajamas, and and we're going to do a a twilight hour. Yeah, we're going to do an overnight 100 proof. The late night (laughs) smooths. Well, we've got some pillow talk talk with (laughs) air (laughs) chair. And oh, I'm sorry. saying goodnight. Exactly. I love that idea. A pillow talk show with Bears Girl. We are losing hey, hey. listeners by the minute. 
<laughs> All right, let's talk some football. We're going to try to make this a short show just because this week has been wacky, and, and we, I just found out that Trey is unable to get to us. We, we just ran l- late with our meeting, meeting, which is – going to pay off for all of our listeners mm-hmm. in the near very near future uh but uh, this show might be impacted by by the at, at the very least the length you're still going to get the great football analysis that we always uh, uh provide for you and so what i want to do is begin with talking about the roquan smith uh, uh situation he is still not signed as of thursday night 1106 Eastern Time, 10.06 Central. Hopefully, by the time you're listening to this, there's an announcement about the signing. This is what Coach Matt Nagy said when he was asked about that by reporters just hours ago. The good thing is being able to be there for the OTAs. He knows what he has, so he's able to be at home right now and and going through his assignments. But it's totally different when you do that versus out here getting the live reps, and he knows that. He's aware of that. Um, And so, uh, again, Ryan said it before, it's it's part of the process. But at the same time, too, you know, you, you are missing out on those reps that these other guys are getting, so it's important. Shane, he sounds a little bit more concerned mm-hmm. than he did a couple of days ago when he was asked that, say, yeah, it's not a big deal, it's part of the process. But now he's bringing up that the fact that he is missing some valuable reps. Oh, yeah, he absolutely is. I mean, it, it, you talk about the process, and this is a big poker game, unfortunately, and then you see – Nagy and and Pace playing their cards now, trying to apply a little bit more pressure on uh, CAA, the agency for Roquan Smith and Roquan himself. But it's, you know, we're all fans here. We all get hyped up and we want him here. And and you look back, luckily this didn't happen last year with Mitch because, I mean, that would have been that would have been a whole different ball of wax when you're talking about a quarterback, at least with Roquan, it's the inside linebacker position, and it's something that he should be able to step right into fairly quickly and, you know, make make the impact. Um, he is going to be the quarterback of the defense, but you still have, I mean, tr- with Trevathan being out also, but um, it does, it, it sucks. You want to, you want the Bears to head into this new season with, you know, no blemishes, and right now they kind of have that hanging over their head. I'm not to the point where I'm worrying, but, um, you know, every day that goes by, you know, you do get closer to that point and, you know, you want him to get the contract that he's comfortable with and that the bears are comfortable with. And they're just probably arguing over semantics at this point, but it, it, you know, it's that first contract and they want to get it right. But, uh, I understand the, the, you know, the intensity that bears fans are, are, you know, refreshing their Twitter timelines to see. I, I I find myself doing it. I I do a search for Roquan Smith for the latest news just to see. You know, I know uh, there was some fake reports that he had signed, and everybody's kind of sitting on the edge of their seats waiting for it to happen. But I would say here, probably in the next 24 to 48 hours, I think we hear something definitive. Well, Rich Campbell of the Chicago Chicago Tribune um, had an article out earlier that said offset language is not standing between the Bears and Smith at this point, and everyone seems to be speculating as to what the issue is and why he hasn't signed his contract, and there's a range of hypothetical scenarios, and I made my open plea on Twitter to the Bears to get this deal done so I can see this kid next weekend uh, when I'm at camp. Yeah, I want to see him there. I'm going to be there with you, Bears girl. Phil, what 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 are your concerns about this early uh, camp period that he's missing? Uh, is is it how big of a deal is it that he's missed the first week? I think it's a big deal because you're a rookie in the NFL, and as Shane said, and really took from my brain that you're the quarterback of the defense. Danny Trevathan's not out there. New head coach, different vibe with the Chicago Bears, not only within Chicago, but nationally. This, to me, once Baker Mayfield signed and then Allen, the quarterbacks, to have him not in camp is completely childish on everyone's part. This should be a layup in regards to you're a linebacker, you're in slotted position. If 
Rich Campbell's correct that it's not offset language, and they're this is dumb. I'll be the first. I'll tell you straight up. This is absolutely hindering the political view of the kid from the meatball fan. Shane, you could say whatever it is you want, but in a city that doesn't like, like, doesn't appreciate nice things, this doesn't bode well in regards to the shiny draft pick. Uh, you know how good the kid is. Now, is it going to hinder him? The player, if he comes next week, no. I just think from not only a PR standpoint, but from the fan base, this looks ignorant in regards to him. It it doesn't look bad on the Bears, especially, I didn't hear that Nagy quote. I saw someone quote Nagy, and I don't know if that was later after he said this, and it the tone was completely different to me. It was almost like, and I'm paraphrasing Nagy, say, I think something good is going to happen real soon. So the tone of the quote heard in the open versus what I read are, are leaving me befuddled that what exactly, and then they throw the Rich Campbell caveat in there, and, and you're baffled because I think based on all of the the hurdles, the slotting, the surrounding talent, and then you add the fact that they're quarterbacks, it should be very easy to get this deal done. And the fact that now you're you're going into Friday and you don't know if the kid's signing and all this other, it's just distract. You don't need distractions as a new head coach and a new team. It, it, it just, it's upsetting me. From that end, from the football end, I don't think Aldo, this is going to set him back or make things, you know, like a quarterback, as Shane was alluding to. Then, yes, yes, I think that would Uh, running back, I think, would set that person back because other players in the position. But I think when you look at Trevathan being out, Kwiatkowski, and then there's a bunch of, you know, a bunch of just guys you, know, you could say what you want about Timu, but this guy's legit, and you're trying to build something in an ascending defense. Him not being there tomorrow is extremely you know, childish on the agency, in my opinion. I, what other possible deal can you get better unless you're just being an asshole? Let's just be perfectly honest. This agent, CAA, apparently has uh, a kind of a reputation for recently. Joey Bosa was it? Was all of them weren't they in this top Aldo? Yeah, all of the holdouts in the top ten were all from CAA. Awesome. So you're talking. This is not a Bears thing, and I'll be the first one to bash them. This is. It's so fucking childish by the agents. It really is. They, I'm. There's no way, Aldo, the kid Ward from Cleveland is signed. Baker Mayfield, the first overall, is signed. Allen behind you is signed. Excuse me, in front of you. And McGlinchey behind you is signed. Yeah, that's and you're the... sitting there acting like you fucking, what do you fucking want? If it wasn't offsetting, it's a, it's just disgusting, to be honest, like this defensive reputation. I don't know what it is with this agency, but come on. This should not be this long. Yeah, I hate I hate it when players go to these big agencies, you know, they're, they're mm-hmm. run by these conglomerates, and, and it's much better for teams to deal with agents, single agents, guys have personalities that develop relationships with teams and so forth. This CAA stuff, Raquan, I think, may have made a mistake in uh, and going for them, but I, I, who knows what the fuck? It, and it's frustrating because they don't tell us anything. They don't give us the truth right. about it, you know. And, mm. and we care so damn much about it. Maybe we shouldn't care, but we do. We want this guy in camp. We want Danny Trevathan's hamstring to heal. We want to see both of those linebackers practicing with one another, learning from one another, teaching one another. And 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 shit, man. You're right, Phil. It it, it gets us pissed off. 
fuck. Now, the good news is... I got... <laughs> breaking news. Uh, uh, I just found an article... Oh, yeah, we're not going to do breaking news tonight. We don't have time for that shit. <laughs> um, I just had an article from Mike Florio over at uh, oh, Pro geez. Football Talk NBC Sports, and he is speculating, this was just a couple of hours ago, on what he thinks is happening uh, with the Smith deal, and he's theorizing um, that the reason this is being delayed is because of the uh, new rules that came into the league with regards to um, tackles. So he believes a quote from this article is Smith plays linebacker. Linebackers make tackles. The helmets they wear may be involved in the tackling process. If the helmet strikes the player, the linebacker is trying to tackle the player may be fined, flagged, ejected, or suspended. And if Smith is suspended for a violation of either of the two new helmet rules, yes, there are two, his guarantees would go away, making it easier for the Bears to dump him if they don't have to continue to play, sorry, to pay him. So oh, Jesus on that, guys. Christ. That's a fucking joke. Mm. I mean, you're, you're talking about something that may never come to fruition. Right. And this kid's losing valuable time in camp because of that. I mean, he, you know, Jesus, it, it, if that's what it is, that's, that's bullshit on the, the agency's part. That's bullshit on the Chicago bears yeah. part, really that you can't work that out. And I mean, let, let's not forget this kid was drafted back in April. I know nobody wants to be the first one to sign, but that's a lot of, you know, they say deals don't get done until time. deals need to be made. But um, <laughs> this has been since the end of April, and it's the only good thing that's going to come from this, like Phil said, is this kid signed. You know, the Bears seem to do a lot of business at 2 and 3 a.m. and release it to the national media at 4 o'clock. You know, Alan Robinson, his signing was announced at like 3 a.m. So maybe we <laughs> hear something tonight and, um, you know, if well, he's playing. be recording. Let's yeah, stay up exactly. and wait for it. <laughs> but as soon as soon as he signs and, and laces him up for that first game, it's not going to be anything that we talk about. But each day that he stays out, it's, I don't think it's going to affect him whatsoever with his play on the field. The thing that I worry about is injuries. You see these guys mm-hmm. that that hold out and they, uh, in true bear fashion, you know, they'll pull a hammy or. Or uh, you know, high ankle sprain or anything like that, and that—that's what you definitely want to avoid. You also have Iggy Abunawe, who's yep. been injured too, and he's missing opportunities based on injury. Absolutely. And you got you know this rookie first round pick, leader of the you know the new age Bears, ascending top ten defense. It just, it's. Way too overboard now. This and, has got to stop. And Aldo hasn't even mentioned that Quentin Nelson signed a long time ago. So if we would have got that card, <laughs> yeah. we wouldn't have to worry about this. And he's already got his gold jacket, so it's all yeah. good. <laughs> you know, the part of the part of the issue is that the players union that just does a terrible job of representing these players. You got in baseball, a, 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 the Chicago Cubs signed a pitcher named Hugh Darvish. For a hundred million dollar plus contract, the guy has has I think pitched two or three games, and if the guy never <laughs> pitches a game, he's going to walk away with all of that money. And yeah. football, these guys are crashing into one another, and they don't have fully guaranteed contracts. It's just ridiculous. The the and it it's started with Gene Upshaw. Ridiculous. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Where's the drop? Where's the drop? I know I'm, he's I'm, not ready. I'm, I'm off my game. I'm making a T-shirt. He's he's been sick. <laughs> he's been sick. We had sound issues. We had Skype that? issues. Oh man, it's been. Bad. What was that song? <laughs> I don't know if they sang it in Canada. What? When you're da 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 soupy and you're gonna go to poopy diarrhea. <laughs> Remember that song? That was me. No. <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> it's you know ridiculous. It's Shane's laugh. No. Yeah. I, I, is, that, is, is that the next 100 proof hit? It might be. I might have to make an Aldo poopy song. Now, one of, one of the things that I'm, uh, I was worried about was the fact that we don't have Raquan Smith and Danny Trevathan in the middle. But one of the good things that's been happening in camp, at least for the defense, is that they're – 
really focused on turning the ball over and we're seeing some results. Matt Nagy talked about that today. Yeah, the takeaways are big and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, I was just in a defensive meeting the other day and, and, and Vic and Coach Donatel were in there going through the, the takeaways and how, how we go about getting them and how important it is and how it changes the game and the technique of how you get the ball out. And so um, that's an emphasis. It, it's, a, it's a game changer uh, when you get that, when, when you get the ball. Uh, from the offense and, and vice versa, offensively, um, you gotta have, we got to preach ball security, how important it is to, to not have turnovers, uh, ball security with the ball high and tight uh, when you're running the football. So uh, it, it'll be a challenge for them when they get in the preseason to see how well they do with it. I, uh, I love the fa- I hate the fact that they're getting turnovers off of Trubisky, <laughs> but, but I love the fact that they're focused on it and uh, this new coaching staff, is making an emphasis on you know stripping the ball and so forth, and apparently from what I heard the reports today on on Thursday's practice, Amukamara had a really good practice, and then we talked about Tolliver's interceptions a few days ago. It seems like almost every day I'm hearing so- something really good about a particular special or a, a defensive back uh, turning the ball over. You guys been hearing the same thing? Yeah, I've heard it, and just to kind of touch on what you said about Trubisky, out of the the thing about none of this counts. This is where you want him to throw those interceptions. You want him to push mm-hmm. the envelope. You want him to test the boundaries of these new wide receivers. All right, I'm going to try to force this in here. I want to see if he can get there. I'm going to test this out. And like you said, at the same time, it's a fantastic sign for our defense that they are getting their hands on these balls. But every pass Mitch is learning from and the, you know, I've seen a bunch of people freaking out about interceptions and, and, you know, it seems like he's got a high number of them in these practices. We just, I mean, what was it three, four years ago with Jay, you know, this is his seventh consecutive practice and he hasn't thrown an interception. Well, what the fuck did that do for us? Didn't really do anything for us. Mm -hmm. It means nothing. I, you want this, let's not forget. He still only started 12 of these games. He's got a whole new cast around him. He's got a whole new coaching staff around him. You want him to work the kinks out. I don't want my quarterback going in there and being limited and and, and timid in practice. I want him forcing the issue. I want him to try to, to, to fit the ball into that window. That's where he's going to learn. You don't want him learning it in Lambeau uh, you know, on, on opening night. We don't want that there. Get it out of the system now. You throw three or four interceptions in a practice. It's it's. I don't think it's it's good or or bad. You just want you know you want him to be productive in that practice. And the most important thing that Nagy said was after that he threw an interception. He bounced back on the very next pass and and you know hit a player in stride and, and made a great play. So that's what you want to see. Let's not focus on practice interceptions i was melting down because cody parkey missed four field goals in practice the other day but then it came out the (laughs) next day that it was a a 59 yarder a 61 yarder a 62 yarder so there's you know you got to have a little bit of context from 60 i'll tell you that yeah (laughs) (laughs) now just to piggyback off him i think it's it's very important what shane said as a coach you want to try to make the defenders defend the football. At the same time, what does a human being learn from? Their mistakes. So the opportunity to make them is in practice. Mm -hmm. As Shane's taught, I want you to realize the rhythm of your past and force it because you might have been sacked had you not thrown it. So maybe that next time you're going to learn to take off and run instead of throwing that pass based on the timing of your drop. So you'll see in these practices sometimes, you know, they're on seven on seven and they're extending the play for another It's four seconds has gone by. That ain't realistic. And then he throws it down the field. So the coaches also will coach, listen, throw it no matter what. And maybe he's not. He's going to take off and run. Again, this is in practice. 
So it's like when the reporters, like I said on Monday, start writing about almost interceptions or a bad throw, they don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mitch could be asked by the quarterback coach, the offensive coordinator, listen, I want you to challenge the defensive back. And if you get a pick, so what? It's, it doesn't matter in practice. So Shane's 100% right. That's exactly what an aggressive play caller does because the only way to learn ball placement, anticipation with players that you're gaining a relationship with is by throwing the football to the spot where you intend them to be. So the communication becomes second nature. The relationship from receiver, tight end, or quarterback, and running back becomes second nature. So in practice, I people are DMing me. I'm not worried whatsoever about Mitch's deep ball, uh, some of the interceptions. I see everything I want to see in a passer because when it's thought about in football game terms, scripted, and it's schemed, to do to call a play versus coverage. I mean, today you saw, thanks to Greg and Aaron, Ryan Heckman, one more example on the virtual blackboard here. The Bears did something I've been dying for them to do. They traded. And what is that? So they line up. Quarterback gets to the under center and he goes, 80. Everybody gets up and they change direction. So they could have lined up and tied in with a wing and a receiver out wide. All of a sudden he yells 880. He backs up at the shotgun. The running back comes back from the wing. The tight end moves to the other side and the receiver comes back in. You all can trade. You know how there's two men in motion and that's a penalty? Well, trading, everybody can move in unison. Thus, Making the defense, A, think, and showing Mitchell exactly what the coverage is, where the blitz is coming, and now you could scheme over. So all the practice interceptions and all the stuff that they're putting in and what they're showing and not showing, to me, you have to be excited because football-wise, when you were football dumb last year in offensive play calling and, and formations and trading and doing things that that can help your young quarterback, they're doing already. And it's the, what, fifth day of practice or sixth day of practice? So mm -hmm. that should be exciting because the best is yet to come from this young football player. The accuracy is there, Aldo. The anticipation. Again, I wouldn't be able to know this. I'd just be reading articles about how shitty he was about how worried they are. He's had a bad day. I, I saw a good day. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I'm saying? So I'm seeing things NFL-wise that you want to see from a young player, and they're installing. They haven't even played a scrimmage yet. So <laughs> it's so funny, the tides and how these guys write. To me, thank God for some of these bar flies bringing the video to us because I would be concerned by the way, I'm reading these guys. Absolutely. Hey, guys. We had a... Guys, real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been real aggressive with my ball placement, and it's really paid off in my sex life. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you, Air Jair. There's our Air Jair ad for Blue Chew. All right, guys. So I want to have you react to two players who were not on the field. Mark Rohde at Mark Rohde Sports was reporting that Matt Nagy believes both Danny Trevathan and Aaron Lynch are close to returning to the practice field. The theme, according to him, with these guys is that there is simply no rush to bring them back at this point, and they are both suffering from hamstring injuries, apparently. Yeah, hammies are nothing to yeah. mess around with. I mean, now you have that extra week. I, I can understand them giving them the, uh, the extra time. You know, just think about how far we've come with this. You asked John Fox that same question last year, and you knew that these guys were going to be out for another six weeks. Yeah, they're almost back. You know, <laughs> exactly. Now. It's kind of and refreshing. That's exactly. it, it, it really is. I, I think of that every time they talk to, to Nagy about, you know, where is, you know, Kyle Long in terms of, of his rehab. 
you never thought he was giving you a line of bullshit. You know, he was upfront about it. And I have no problem with, with it makes it look a little bit worse with, with Roquan being unsigned and, and Trevathan being out and uh, EA Booney way having his shoulder dinged up, but it gives a guy that needs reps like Nick Kwiatkowski. And I mean, that's only going to pay off for the, for the bears in the long run, get him these, he's the man right now mm-hmm. in the middle. And, and it gives him a, uh, a you shot. say, you say every rep is important. That, that is exactly true for Nick Kwiatkowski too. So he, he seems to be stepping up and, and taking that next step a little bit, but um, let these guys get healthy because at the end of the day, we want them healthy and on the field for, for uh, green Bay. Absolutely. I feel the same way. Let's, you know, let's not forget that there's an extra week of practice. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's, it's not like uh, they're really behind schedule. Let's not panic, although I'm still pissed well, off. Well, it depends on who you choose to read because Chicago Tribune likes to use this to have some clickbait headlines like, without Danny Trevathan and Roquan Smith, the Bears are left scrambling to plug holes. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I just want Iggy back so we can play... The Iggy Abunaway song. No, I'm dying to play that. <laughs> we, we got so much good stuff in store here that. Uh, what are you, what are you? Well, and uh, here's a PSA: If you're not a fan of the music, feel free to fast forward. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Nice and play, what, BG. That's what you. No problem. That's what I fucking do. cram on that button every time Phil's music comes on. <laughs> It's probably so faded, right, on your screen. There's yeah. like a little section. I got a little crack on my on my iPhone screen there from pounding that fucking go ahead fifteen seconds. But you you never fast forward on this song. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, every week, every day, every day, yo, so many insiders, inside, so many. Rumors, rumors that you have to wait through. There's one man, one man, one, one, one man with one eye, one eye man. You know him as Lock 'em for a, 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 lock 'em for a. He's Jason, lock 'em for a. What did Jason say? Lock 'em for a, lock 'em for a. I gotta ask you. Why your dancing uh-huh. was not included in the Luck and Fora video? I know, that should that be edited is, in. It should be in there, right? I'm doing a re- yeah. I'm I thought he was it. like imitating a <laughs> choreograph. Well, I recorded my screen, so we're all Of course you did. Um, and this is why I no longer go on camera with these kids. <laughs> Good call. I'm not at all ashamed of my dancing to that particular song. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> all right. Um, I also wanted to play uh, some audio that Ryan Nagy uh, had about this running back, Ryan Null. Now, frankly, prior to uh, the signing of this kid, I didn't know much about him. So on our draft show, uh, Phil was raving about him, and boy, it does seem like uh, Phil was correct that this guy, at, at least today, he looked really good in practice, particularly in goal line situations. This is what Coach Nagy said about the kid. The nice thing with Ryan is he's, he's versatile in the fact that he can run the ball, he can block, he can go out and run routes, he can do different things. And so being a rookie coming in here as an undrafted free agent, uh, he's done really well. And, and we were excited to get the pads on him and see what he did. And you saw in the live periods that uh, he was making plays. The defense has been forced. Yeah, again, thanks to our bar flies out there who were shooting video of today's practice because I saw a clip of him running one in from uh, the uh, goal line formation and the kid running yeah. with power. And uh, he's going to be a guy to keep an eye on. When we're out there that weekend, we've got to look for, for Ryan and maybe even try to get him on the show. It's, I, I bet he'd be a great interview. It's going to be say it. one thing, Shane, before you yeah. cut me off again. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone first every time. I don't know if you well, know. Because it's, it's just, just one more haters. thing. Just one more thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got to say this, though. You know, in assessing this kid's ability coming out in the draft, a lot of people projected him because of his 
Caucasian persuasion to be a fullback. And we talked about this with Emery Hunt, mm -hmm. also with Sigmund uh, Bloom. Right. And, and my belief that this kid is the perfect complement to Jordan Howard. Yeah. And you look at a Benny Cunningham and what he does. I mean, he's hyped up to be a good third down blocker. But on the tape that I see, there's a lot of lackadaisical plays. Now, there are some good with Benny, but if you're saving money and you're looking at a young talent, I mean, it's evident in those runs today that uh, Greg and Ryan Heckman put up, uh, Greg Braggs Jr., um, mm -hmm. this kid has an innate, instinctive ability to go along. Now, this kid's 200, almost 42 pounds running like this and he's in the secondary out running a corner who has the angle mm -hmm. i don't remember the number who could be a third string corner and the the typical meatball line those guys are going to be bagging groceries the whole point of this is to assess the ability of the player and let me tell you something about every guy out there has pride heart and talent so when you're having a head coach that holds people and players accountable each and every play what you put on tape is all you can go by. And what I saw in this kid is what Nagy's saying, the versatility. Because he can, yes, play fullback much better than what you got there. He also can give you snaps at tailback and short yardage situations. To have two of them on the football field and the creativity of this head coach, that this kid can catch the ball the way he does, away from his body. I just think this is definitely, Al, you're on to it. Great kid to talk to as well as a great – I love the signing. Mm -hmm. I loved it more than Kevin Tolliver, which was my second favorite signing. I just thought that this kid would mix with what Nagy does, and, and we're seeing it. So how they use him is going to be interesting and how they, they view that tight end fullback and this kid could – Save a roster spot, Aldo, because Burton's a waste. We know that. I, I just I can't even fathom it. But I just wanted to say that in regards to undrafted, and we talked about it all offseason, me and Shane, every player matters. And when you have a coach that was an arena football player and an undrafted guy himself, and he went out of his way to say what he did, I think – Let's keep an eye on Ryan Nall and see how he does in scrimmages because it, it's going to be exciting, to be honest. I see it. I hope he does really well in special teams because that's how he's going to earn his spot on the roster. Uh, yeah. Shane hey, Williams. Aldo, real quick before I, we bounce off of him. Phil, you, you see Chris Cooley when yeah. we're talking about Ryan Nall? Mm, interesting. I could see him doing things like that, yes. Yeah. But I you know, think he's much better – athlete than Cooley. No, I, really I yeah, I, I like I, a runner. Yeah. He's a natural runner. Yeah, Cooley, and he's they're but he built. can do what you're saying. He's built like yeah. that. Yeah, they're so, built you know very he similar. Reminds like, me of Shane. He reminds me of the fucking kid I loved coming out of Harvard. Now he's with the 49ers. Oh yeah, um, I know he's the Polish kid. I can't pronounce it. Yurshek, Yurshek, Use Use Check, yeah, Kyle Use Check, yeah. Using him in that vicinity, but also as a runner, because he he is not just a fullback or no. H back. I when you have natural run instincts and you're 240 something pounds, and let's be honest, I think he ch clocked in at his pro day at 448 for that size. That's moving. Check his <laughs> check his RAS from our Matt bomb and, and you'll see this kid tested out. I couldn't believe with bottom of my heart that he did not get drafted. In fact, I said it on that show. I asked, I think it was bloom. I go, can you believe he didn't get drafted? He's like, yeah, I, I don't believe it. I, I know later than the fifth round on a guy like this. Right. So the, size the, speed, Shane, is the, we need speed. This kid can catch and he can run and he can do these things. I the mean, Bears showed a lot of interest in him pre-draft. I, I He was a guy that I had marked down for them, you know, when yeah, you're talking I mean, the sixth and seventh rounds that I, I, I really looked at it like his pace 
has shown that penchant for these, you know, fourth and fifth round running backs and, and getting these later guys with a guy that provides that much versatility. It's a just a huge benefit. And let's not forget Matt Nagy in this whole equation. He's not going to be afraid to play him right. because he's an undrafted rookie. If he exactly. shows out, I think it was Mike Brez I had this little back and forth with on Twitter about now. And he was ridiculous. Mike was more onto the Benny Cunningham train. You know, Cunningham has got got the experience on him. But I I said, you know, Mike, if Nall shows out, Nagy, Nagy's going to play the guy if he proves it that he can. You know, he can pick up blocks and that he can. You know, catch a wheel route, all that stuff. Just you know, get get you a third and one you know, goal line situations, provide that versatility, he's going to play and he's going to play a lot. It just, it's going to be on Nall to prove it. Right, he's got to do you know, it in the games. Got, and he's got a, a guy like that. It's huge that he's got five games rather than the exactly. four. Exactly, exactly. Um, I got a tweet from the Bears that I know you all saw because it had the words we've been wanting to see for a while. Roster update, we have signed. And then we heard about the wide receivers, or as Phil likes to call them, the wife receivers. So uh, the Bears signed wide receiver Malachi Jones and waived wide, wide receiver Matt Fleming today. Is it Malachi or Malachi? I've always said Malachi. Malachi. That's all I said. Malachi? I thought it was Malachi. I thought it, it was Malachi, Malachi, too. It's probably it's Malachi. Malachi. All I think yeah. is the children of the corn. Yeah. Two very ex- <laughs> two very explosive players being swapped out for one another. That's for no, that's was, for sure. I was very interested in seeing Fleming. Yeah, like, you know, in these games where we have extra games, I wanted to see this kid. I was, I think I mentioned it on one show. I was interested, so it's disappointing on one end. But like you said, this is a kid that was the Arena Football League Rookie of the Year. He's tall. He's explosive. So to get a player in here, I guess he had a tryout with some other guys too, and yeah, a, you know all, he's an all. They had boy. this plan, yeah. So Shane, what do you think? I'm excited about this kid. I want to see what he does. Like we talk, you talked about it with Nal. This coach yeah. for the first time, as Aldo, as you said rather about injuries, he's giving you updates truthfully. I really believe, you know, in the Pete Carroll way. Finding the best players, no matter where they are, is so critical. You look at the Patriots. They do that. They don't give a fuck if they drafted a third rounder and he sucks, but the sixth rounder's busting his ass out there. He's going to play them. Yeah. And that's what you – I've always died on the fucking cross of blue and orange that you guys don't do this in Chicago when it's very easy to see this kid would help you. And they always politic it off and huffing and puffing, and we had the fucking worst coaches. Finally, I believe, again, in this situation, you know, a kid comes in here, shows so much fucking heart, that competition level for all the fucking blue chew Lauren Cox wants to give Kevin White, this kid comes in here and fucking pushes him. I mean, not to change the subject, but I don't want to fucking forget. I got to say this. Everything Anthony Miller's doing is what I would have expected Kevin White to be. So Anthony Miller, just in watching the clips these guys have given us, is fucking 20 times the receiver. It's it's not even close. You want to hype up Kevin White? Go ahead. I'm going to fucking keep it 100. And I'm going to say this. This kid's a rookie, Anthony Miller. His fucking routes are crisp. His hands are confident and soft, and he is out there fucking saying, fuck you. I'm going to fucking catch every ball. That's the guy I want. That's what I want Kevin White to be. And I still see tense Kevin. I still see. Yeah, no, I I see the hype train going on, Kevin, but I'm never going to fucking sell you that. I don't see Anthony Miller, Kevin. You want Anthony. Kevin is getting his ass a fire under his ass right now. And that rookie, let me tell you, fucking Tucci could have fucking hated him. 
You better start fucking <laughs> loving them now because this kid, I'm telling you, I'm fucking excited. I didn't even think that he Did was you see that one he's clip? He's so still? Oh my god. Did you see that clip from camp where he turned Kyle Fuller inside yes. out? Yes. Yes. I mean, that is should... polished. That's yes. Kyle Long is the yeah. best defender on the field right now. Fuller. In my eye. Yeah, Fuller. He looks fucking tremendous. People worrying about his payday. Remember that shit? Well, yeah. if you pay him, I mean, the, the blog. I don't know if we should match this because... What? Actually, I don't think I don't think the blog knows that we even re-signed him. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> They're going to find out in about three weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Update. 15 but years. But they, they talked to Moon Mullen. You. Somebody asked Moon Mullen who the biggest trash talker was. On the Chicago mm-hmm. Bears Jeez. roster. You're and he said it. Yeah, PG. and he's got strep throat. Talking about mm-hmm. Josh Bellamy. And he said, but he goes, we got a guy at number two that's just about ready to take over that mantle. And that's Anthony Miller. Anthony he's Miller. like, he he doesn't care who he's talking to. He's not backing down to anybody. And I said, when's the last time that you had a young rookie, you know, just bursting with talent but that's, oh. you know, ki- talking but also carrying it forward with his play on the field when's the last time we had that in chicago i mean you had a guy like Honestly. david terrell that loved to talk but he he couldn't translate it over onto the field this kid you're getting that complete package that's why we put tooch down in that cave to write that article about him to wake him the fuck up <laughs> when he was killing miller but no you're fucking that trivia question should be a you know, a poll when this comes out because you know what, Shane? I fucking can't think of anyone. Maybe Mike Brown when he came into the league mm-hmm. uh, with the Bears, yeah. but he wasn't even really right. I mean, he did talk, but it was in the intensity of the game. Talk. Yeah. Like he ain't fucking bagging now. Right. Only Cruz, maybe. Only Cruz would come to mind. And yeah, that motherfucker is D- gonna fucking talk, and he's gonna tell D- you, and he's gonna. F- the cornerback DJ Moore was a guy that came up. Remember, he was small, and he was a late oh, round yeah. draft pick. I think out of Wake Forest. Wake Forest. Yeah, he came up, yeah. and he he would talk a lot of smack. But this is a he high. Not, dra- yeah, this is. This is a high draft pick, uber talented. He's gonna, you know, tell you about your mother to your face, and then he's gonna go out there, and and <laughs> turn you around like he did Kyle Fuller, and. Don't think for one minute that Kyle Fuller isn't looking at that kid and saying, holy fuck, this kid's for real, you know? Mm-hmm. And they're all saying it. Yeah. They're all fucking saying it. And they're going to let him talk. Every person in the stadium is saying it. It's very... Remember, we had uh, Greg on Aldo Bears Hour Live with me and BG, and he said it. You know, it's... Wow. Yeah, you just know. Yeah, Tariq Cohen, wow. Devin Hester, wow. But as Shane's putting, and I'll give it in my my mother's, you know, Sunday, he's putting extra scoops in the Sunday (laughs) because this fucking guy is playing with a chip on his shoulder while he's wowing you. So he's going to be doing it like that's what I'm going to be here to do type of receiver. And I, you think of guys like Chad Johnson and Michael Irvin and, and the kid, you know, as much as you fucking hate them, OBJ down in New York that want the fucking ball. I respect that. I could, I don't like all the antics and shit. And I, I don't think Miller's that, but I think Miller's the person on the football field that we have not had. Give me the fuck, show me the ball. I want it. And I want it now. And, and you could drop in the fucking Willy Wonka chick right there if you want. <laughs> I want it now, Daddy. Because this motherfucker, <laughs> he wants that football. I'll, and I I'll, love be, that I'll be right in, honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No matter what, he'll get a laugh with the air jar oppression. It just, oh, I, can't, wow. I can't take it. <laughs> uh, I need another laugh, oh. so here we go. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aldo spelled my fucking oh, yeah, rock, yeah. <laughs> He's the smartest man. He'll make you cry, make you laugh, bring perspective when there's fog. For 15 years, he's been the smartest man on the Bears, and he's never once read the Bears blog. <laughs> he's the smartest man in the bar room. Uh, well done. Well, we got to explain okay. the, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. We were, I mentioned the meeting that we were having, so I sent some T-shirt mock-ups because the swag shop is opening soon. I sent some T-shirt mock-ups to uh, Shane and, and, and Phil and Bears Girl to take a look at, and apparently – I got the oh yeah yeah wrong. <laughs> Probably the easiest T-shirt we have. Uh, you know, got yep. four words on it. <laughs> That's why I got your approval first. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I didn't see those. I didn't approve those. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the part of the show where Shane Marsaw takes a look at the tweets of the week and he shakes his head at one and he says, no, you are bad. I'm going to highlight you on the show. And he takes a look at another and says, oh, I like this tweet. I am going to highlight it on Bears 100 Proof. And we always begin with the bad tweet of the week. Shane, take it away. So, yeah, for the bad tweets, I think everybody saw the fervor that was created uh, this this week. Uh, Mr. Gap Tooth himself, Eric Lambert. Oh, yes. at, at Bears Camp was recycling information from uh, people that were actually on the scene and trying to make it look like he was there. Well, he took offense to myself and a few other people calling him out, which it is, you know, it's a, you shouldn't have to do that. I mean, Eric knows better and he's trying to project something that he's not. Well, he sent out he sent out a tweet and it said somebody asked him how come he didn't just take a picture and you know why he made it so cloak and dagger about if he was there or not. And he said, I went there as a fan because I was there to watch the action. I don't have to answer to people who clearly have a vendetta against me for one reason or another. You'll notice that I never am the one that is firing back with the shots. Why do I not fire back? Because that's what they want, and I don't have time for that. Well, then he followed it up a few minutes later with, I'm going to the Vernon Hills practice next month, and you will you can be sure that I'm going to post a pic of me there just to stick it to all the haters that were giving me grief <laughs> <laughs> and then do exactly the same thing that I did this time around and not say a word, so... You know, Eric, I know we all give him grief in the, the sports mockery thing, but I honestly, just more so than anything, I found what he was doing to be really actually gross. You know, it, it was. We had uh, uh, Braggs was there doing all of his video, and Zeke was there today, and these guys were taking time out of their day, and, and making the trek there and, and recording things and tweeting things out for everybody's benefit. And then you got a guy like Eric Lambert that's probably sitting in his mother's basement, you know, regurgitating information from people. And it's just, a, it's a, it's a bad look for, for sports mockery. It's an especially bad look for Eric Lambert. And, you know, I just like to give a shout out to the people that are, are there that are investing the time and, um, you know, sending us all these videos and just kind of rain on the parade of, of Eric Lambert one more time because it's I don't have any use for for stuff like that. And and I know, Aldo, you and BG are going uh, to camp and if you're tweeting out stuff and then you see somebody recycling it, it's just a it's a gross look overall. And I thought that we should uh, give him the, the shittiest tweets of the week award far and away just for his actions i i don't agree with him whatsoever and it's not just because i don't like eric lambert as a person it's, it's more than that i would you know if this was somebody else i'd do the same thing so eric lambert you are the winner of the uh, dumbest tweet of the week award 
What was that Twitter handle? I want to block him. Eric was uh, a regular guest on Phil's Daily Dose show uh, back yeah. when we did that show. Mm -hmm. he, he seems like a great guy and so forth. And so I was surprised that that whole thing happened. And I actually sent him a DM saying, dude, you need to clear this up because it sounds like no one believes that you're there. And for good reason, <laughs> you're not posting right. any pictures mm -hmm. and stuff. So he went well. and, and tried to clear it up, but there was certainly still a lot of uh, well, doubt. Even, yeah, even his Aaron, clearing it up was bullshit. Yeah, Did you even see to, what he said? Aaron Lemming oh. sent him a tweet and said, Eric, just clear it up and take a picture right now of you there, and then these guys will stop. And he said, well, strangely enough, by the time I realized that this was a thing, I was already back on the road, and I couldn't take a picture of me at practice. So, you know, how convenient was that? And Well, there was one more thing where was someone the questioned. The, yeah. the one more thing was where someone questioned um, why they didn't see him with the media. And he said, oh, it's because I was in the stands. I wasn't on the sidelines, on the field with the media. And someone called him out on that and said, the media isn't on the sidelines. They're not oh. allowed on the sidelines anymore. They have a reserved section oh. now in the fucking stands. The and he didn't gun. respond to that. So <laughs> if, you're actually, well, if you're actually there, yeah, you then yeah. wouldn't you see the, the media personalities sitting all together somewhere as opposed to standing on the sidelines? Like, come on. Right. Yeah, and somebody else... Somebody else questioned him, and he said that the reason he didn't take any video is because he wanted to save the battery life on his phone. So I instead, he, that, in, instead, <laughs> he tweeted, <laughs> instead he tweeted out all day long. But exactly. he did have he did have one other uh, tweet that he sent out. I believe it was yesterday, and he said I thought it was kind of funny. I mean, I know we. We go right after these guys and these people that we consider frauds. They end up, you know, hanging themselves anyway. Well, Eric sent out another tweet. He said, I finally saw some clips of the Bears using Jordan yeah. Howard and Tariq, Tariq Cohen in the backfield together more often. <laughs> it's shocking that it often led to productive plays. I, I expect to see a lot more of that. Well, you saw the clips because you weren't at practice to exactly. see it live, you dumbass. So you hung yourself right Another there. Another smoking gun. This kid's got two. Listen, yeah. I just wanted to talk. Captain Obvious. Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to chime in because I, you know, I do like Eric. You know, I don't. I know you don't. <laughs> and I like it's Eric. fine. And <sighs> there's a level of integrity. That you have to have. Even for yep. me, I said it on the show with Greg. Greg's there filming this. And I kind of feel weird to do a quote tweet to break down the game. But that's my that's my thing. I, I feel it. I, I'm compelled because of the national scope and narrative of players like Jordan Howard can't catch. And there it is right there. And I'm going to break it down that's and i feel weird about that but to, to ultimately have that lying arrogance i mean we talk about it with lemon and we talk about it with some of these other frauds like the blog the danahy and the other people we've had issues with and we don't just dig up these issues guys we don't oh those fucking juveniles that uh no there's real passion to somebody going there, as Shane said, to do the work, to do the time, to see these guys lie, whether it be on an article or if you're there at a practice. To me, it just is despicable, to be perfectly honest, and, and to not give credit exactly. to those guys that are doing it. Like, that was my goal, you know, and Greg, having him on the fucking show, and what a great guy he is. I know Dan Walker was breaking my, uh, my chops about my love for Greg and, and how he could talk, but I just love people that have passion, and I don't think they should be overlooked 
for your gain. And that's my problem with Eric and, and the situation. If I'm a guy I like, I'm just disappointed that you would do that. And for me, I'm dead honest. If I was there and I had left and someone said that and I decided I was going to tweet out, well, just conveniently, I Shane said, I would fucking turn around. You got the level right. of pride that I have in my fucking heart yep. that I was fucking there. I would turn the fuck around. I would drive back there and take a picture with them to to set the tone that I'm never lacking a moral quality or integrity. And to, to my people that follow me and trust me and, 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 you know, happy birthday to Shane and me and love this fucking show. Yeah. It would, I would, I don't care if I was 45 minutes away. I would do it. And that, unfortunately, that's not in his heart. But I just wanted to say that because it was a letdown for me, Eric. Because I'm sitting here arguing with one of my best friends about you. And you took it upon yourself. And Aldo, too, DMing him. That was class. I didn't even DM him. I just was... I was befuddled by it, embarrassed to be honest. Let the record him. show if I, if he hadn't blocked me last year, I would have DM'd him too. <laughs> <laughs> and there's another one off of the list for Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Leading the league in blocks. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know. Well, you know we are all about receipts here. So next time, <laughs> producer receipt. Yeah, yeah. Eric should have even if he's 45 minutes away. From Bourbon A. He should have mm-hmm. just pulled over and got a shot of some cornfields and said, listen, I, I left. Yeah. Was, uh, At the end of the day, we're all Chicago Bears fans. We all have cell phones. Nobody's going to camp and not popping a picture. Nobody. No, absolutely. Who would go to the fucking, what is it, the Grand Canyon and come away empty-handed from a fucking pick? That's true. I, I mean, I've taken pictures of fat girls that I fucked. <laughs> 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 Can we move on to the good tweet now, please? Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the fatties at? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's a mailman. He, w- he was once bitten in the ass by a dog. If challenged, He's not a little bitch. He'll go on any show. Unlike an orange pant wearing blog. He's the <laughs> smartest man. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're having a blast so- here. I told you we were going to upset some people at the beginning of the show. <laughs> <laughs> this so- is what this show is about. Oh, wow. Why do you fucking listen? Uh, it's a show about nothing. <laughs> Tonight, when I got home from work, I fired up the treadmill and I turned on uh, David Kaplan's show. Uh, I'm blanking on the name of it on Cap NBC Company? Sports. Sports talk. Uh, no, 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 no sports the TV live? show. Sports yeah, talk. Sports Talk Live, and he was talking about the Chicago Bears and training camp, and he said, "I talked to two uh, people today." I talked to one on the phone, and I think he talked to one in person. One was Charles Davis, and that, the other one might have been Daniel Jeremiah. And both of them told Cap today that the best uh, wide receiver in the draft didn't reside in Atlanta and didn't reside in Carolina, that he resided in Chicago. And Anthony Miller, well, David Haw had a rebuttal to it and said, the only reason that those guys are saying that was because they knew you were from Chicago and, and, and blah, 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 blah. Are you blah, kidding? You know, typical, are typical, you fucking kidding me? No, no, typical David Haw fashion. Oh, well, I wish we had the audio. It was weird. So after I got done running, oh, I, was, I was going around uh, Twitter and mm-hmm. Phil Savage at Phil Savage, he used to be the head of the Senior Bowl. He was the yep. uh, radio guy for for Alabama uh, Crimson He's Tide. On Sirius NFL yep, Radio, Sirius now. XM all the time. He sent out a tweet 
and it said, based on what I saw today at Chicago Bears camp, uh, Memphis uh, football wide receiver Anthony Miller is going to be an immediate contributor as a rookie. He's arguably the best player on the field this morning. Super quick, sticky hands, and production usually adds up to NFL success. So that blew everything out of the water that David Haw was alluding to, that it just happened to be, you know, some guys talking to somebody from Chicago. Phil Savage was a, a GM in the league and is very well Browns. respected in the, the college ranks and in the NFL. And for him to say that out, you start, just like we were alluding to, you start to see this momentum building for a kid that's bursting with enthusiasm anyway. Mm -hmm. And once that happens, you get that tsunami wave going and it can, you know, carry right over through the season. And he's, I mean, he looks fantastic. You hope that he can continue with it because it's only going to help Mitch. But I, I loved uh, Phil Savage tweeting that out and just it worked in concert, you know, with exactly opposite of what David Haw was saying. So. That's kind of why I picked that out. But I did want to refer to one more. Uh, oh, to a kind double. Of, a yeah, daily kind double? Of double it up a little bit. Well, can I and, say one thing about Hall before you go? Yeah, absolutely. Aldo, I don't know how or what. Maybe it needs to be a song. Chicago can't have nice things. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right there to come up with a conspiracy theory that – Two guys, I respect Daniel Jeremiah and Charles Davis. I know Aldo could decide whether or not he wants to tell the story. I met Charles. He was a sweetheart, gave me all his time. Then we talked uh, in the bathroom all the way to the set when he was. I was in Radio City. Uh, that was the year we drafted Greg Olson, and me and Charles was the nicest guy. We talked Greg Olson, what it meant for the Bears, how, what a great pick this is. The whole night gave me all the time, and we chatted back and forth about football. To think that these two gentlemen are going to go on a show and blow smoke up somebody's ass because they're from that city and put their reputations as football analysts. These aren't writers. Daniel Jeremiah, whether you agree with his assessment or or not, is an analyst in my eyes. He, I respect his opinion. You know, in the room, you want people you don't agree with all the time, but this is a guy I trust. Same with Charles. Mm -hmm. So to say that is just such a fucking arrogant, I fuck it. Pardon my language. Don't pardon my language. Whatever. David Haw is a just a negative Nancy. He's just the absolute epitome of somebody who wants to create a story in the negative light when Shane and I are talking about we haven't had a player to exhume this much confidence and to top it off to have the, the backing of talent since we can remember. So to take it down like that in the moment, I'm saying, Shane is disgusting to me and it goes back they can't have nice things because of putting people like this in a position to sway the sheep and it's unfortunate to me and that will never happen on this show for me or Shane or anybody I, I i think that's such a negligent comment well said go ahead Shane. Yeah, so before Phil took over my segment, I was going to give you a second, <laughs> second good tweet. Um, it wasn't really, a, it, was a, it was tweeted out in different ways, but I, I'm going to give credit to the Chicago Sun-Times on this one. They were talking to Nagy about his pass rushers, and he made a quote that really stood out to me that I love to see. Uh, he said, it's obviously great to have Sam, talking about Sam Acho. He's a consistent guy that you know is going to get the job done. And then this is the, the part that really started to, to catch my eye. And he said, and one other guy that I want to point out is Kylie, talking about Kylie Fitz, is having a really good camp so far. He plays so hard, extremely hard. 
I have to sometimes remind him to, to make sure to stay away from the quarterback and the throwing motion. And he actually came up to me on Monday and he apologized to me for doing it. But he said, you can't fault the kid for trying to play hard, trying to get to the quarterback. So I just told him, when you get to the preseason, you do that as much as you want. So got to keep our eye on this kid, Kylie Fitz. This isn't yeah. a guy that, that uh, got drafted low because he couldn't produce. He never had a problem producing. He had a problem staying injury-free. That's the reason he dropped so much. But, you know, this is one of these guys that, that Ryan Pace kind of was trying to catch lightning in a bottle. And I know it's very, very early and it's hard to, to gauge anything from a pass rush in a training camp practice. But this is one guy that if I could, if I could tell Bears fans and, and even us here on the show, to uh, really sit down and, and watch this kid uh, a week from tonight versus Baltimore in the Hall of Fame game, he's going to be right up at the top of my list for the guy to watch to see him get after the quarterback because it's a glare. Guys, we know it's a glaring need on this roster, and if he shows any semblance of being able to get her to, you know, he's got that bend. He can get around the corner. And if he can bring down a couple of quarterbacks, it's going to, it's going to make such a difference in this roster. So Kylie Fitz is a, as a guy, like I said, that I'm going to have at the top of my list to watch next week. And when your head coach is giving you praise for being relentless, you hear, you hear Matt Nagy say, you know, be, um, Yourself. Where they say be obsessive and you know yeah. all that stuff, you hear you hear that and and Fitz is translating that over onto the field and that's a great thing to see. All right, we're going to move this show along. We're going to do something a little different here, guys. <laughs> shoutouts. <laughs> <laughs> but before we do the shoutouts, I want to play something for you. You know, for the longest time we've wanted to do a a show where we all get drunk. And, um, and just go on for two hours being drunk. Well, I decided to play around with the audio stuff that I got here to see what would that sound like. A lot of fast food, yeah. But if you order it fresh off the broil, it is a great... Burger. You tell me right now if I get in my car and try the Burger King right now <laughs> and be like, let me get a motherfucking, what you get, a Whopper, Whopper with cheese, can I get a Whopper with, with the no bacon? With my fucking whatever. Fresh off the board, and they gon' give me the yes. best burger I ever had. The best fast food burger. I'm gonna be like, oh, it's gonna be upgraded. <laughs> like, uh, Bellamy's Rolls Royce. So and was his Versace sheets his baby on my butt? But Trey's all fucked up. He's wrapped in Whoppers and Versace. <laughs> what the hell was that? That was, that was like, Phil's, that was Phil's so laugh, right? Yeah, it was Phil's like laugh. That. I, was, I was just saying, man. I had a, dude, I had a conversation with somebody. I said, this motherfucker, you, you think the hell he's is Antonio Shane. Brown he's or up. something. Like how he acts on Instagram. You think What's he's his plan, Trey, after the league? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he uh, comes. Maybe he comes for money or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> can we, can we get him on the show? 
That's a good question. I might hate Bellamy. Who wants you to come on the show and discuss how you drop every crucial pass? How much is a Versace comforter, VG? Man, let me look that up. Hold on. Does he have. Is he married? Does he have a kid? He has a kid, yeah, I know. Can we get him a Versace onesie shape? <laughs> <laughs> With all the, all the money we get paid here? Uh, no. Well, these are hideous. Versace sheets go, and it's just either the flat or the fitted goes between three ninety five and seven hundred and twenty-five dollars. Just the sheets? That's a single sheet. What's the thread count? <laughs> there he is, he woke up. What's the what's the thread count? Boy, <laughs> boy, <laughs> thread count? Hold on. Twenty million? <laughs> 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 No, I can't yank, I can't yank the video from DMs, no. I'm, I'm good at yanking, but not from DMs, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and look at that, it's time for me to go to bed. We were all drunk. Aldo was on heroin when he came in. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I oh pictured my myself God. like having my head on the bar stool and just, you know, all of a sudden like lifting yeah. my head up and yeah, I was the thread cat and going back to sleep. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a lot of fun. So maybe we don't do the drug show after listening to that. You don't have to. <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> Trey sounds like uh, he was really fucked up on that stuff. Yes, yeah, he did. Yeah. He didn't even sound like him. <laughs> he sounded like a drunk white guy, didn't he? <laughs> uh, kind of, yeah. The, the, the ultimate insult. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we're going to move to shout outs with a little different music. <laughs> a little Sopranos music that I use at the top nice. of the show. Nice. <laughs> Uh, we're going to start with oh, Bear's okay. Girl doing shout outs because she's going to wake up in about four hours and then we'll go to uh, Shane and then, we'll, and then <laughs> Phil and I will close the show out. All right, Bear's Girl. Yeah, you're, you're, you're not lying. It's, it's four and a half hours. I'll be up. Um, so all my shout outs are going to be for people celebrating birthdays this past week. So happy birthday to Provence LeBlanc. His birthday was yesterday. And guess who else's birthday was yesterday? None other than our pal, Shane Marsa. We also hey, had hey. a birthday today, two and four, Tariq Cohen. He turned 23 today. And we can't forget the birthday that happened on Saturday, our very own draft, Dr. Phil. Nicely done. Oh. Nicely done. All right, Thank let's you. go. Go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. That's what she said. It sounds like you say that every day. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Shane, you got a shout out or two or three? I actually do. I do. I want to shout out the three middle aged, overweight women that work at the DMV that I was at <laughs> two days ago that wasted 45 minutes of my time. Fucking bitches there. Oh, my God. God. I had to go on and renew my license, and I standing in line. And she's like, "All right, line up over here. Go get a picture. You got to get your picture." 
So of course I blinked on the first one. She's like, is this okay? And I said, no, my eyes are closed. Take it again. <laughs> so she took it again and she's like, oh, nope, that's not going to work either. You're too tall. I said, well, what the fuck does that even mean? You're I'm too, too tall. tall. <laughs> yeah, too tall. And I'm like, what do you have to do? Get up on like a bench or something? Raise your camera? I don't, I don't, what do you want me to do? She's like, well, can you bend your knees and scooch down a little bit for me? <laughs> so I'm sure I'm going to look like a, a Toshin family member scooching down in my <laughs> new enhanced license. But they wasted 45 minutes of my time in the damn DMV because I had to you change had a my photo t- shoot. Yeah, I had to change my address to our new place and go through everything. And they're fucking horrible in New York DMV dealing with them. So I want to shout out those three fucking pigs that wasted my time that I <laughs> hate. So. Oh, Jesus. Well, uh, Great. Uh, Shane, I uh, got some news for you. You're using the whole shout out thing wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. So those are my shout out. <laughs> yeah, if you get a shout out from Shane, you don't want one. Yeah, really. I thought BG was going to talk about thread counts and bacon, <laughs> BG. <laughs> Ooh, not tonight. <laughs> Next week, Shane will be shouting out Adolf Hitler. Um, yes. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> really? <laughs> All right, Phil, what do you got? Oh, here we go. Another hour. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, good job. Thanks for keeping it short, Phil. Good night, everybody. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be remiss to not shout out our boy Greg Braggs Jr. for continuing to bring great video footage to the Bears fan and the Barfly worldwide. I also want to shout out his partner in crime today, Barfly's meeting up. You know, it takes a lot of brass balls. You know, we talk about Twitter tough guys and keyboard tough guys, but I mean, you put a video out there and you're shouting out Bears Bar Room or Shane or myself. I mean, Ryan shouted me out for calling out the blog and, and challenging him. Really, Shane challenged him to come on and debate with me. And Ryan Heckman, I got to shout you out because a lot of people talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. I mean, we talked about it with Lambert. You put your face to something and say something. And that, to me, is the ultimate thing that you could do. And I, I was humbled by it. And, how can I not shout that kind of passion out? I would be a fool if I didn't. It takes a lot of balls to do that. And and I appreciated that. So I wanted to make sure I shouted out um, Ryan Hackman. And if you follow him, you know he's going to be at camp tomorrow too. As is Greg. They both assured me they're going down there. I want to shout out Zeke who was there today. Another bar fly. Went up to Kyle Long. Had Kyle Long. Saying what up to the bar room. We're, I, I, I gotta tell Zeke tomorrow to tell him we got his song. It's coming out. Yeah, yeah. What, what are we doing it next week, Al? Though we're gonna give him the song. We definitely will do it next week. Absolutely. There you go. So Zeke, I know you'll be listening in the morning. First thing, like Kyle, no draft, Doctor Phil, and Bobby Phelan, who co-wrote it with me is bringing his song next week to Bears 100 Proof. Keeping it 100, as he says. (laughs) But last one, I want to shout out all the bar flies. Everybody, as I said on Bears Hour Live, I'll reiterate it (laughs) for saying happy birthday to Shane and myself and for the love you guys give us to make this happen. And for us, like we said at the top of the show, having a great freaking meeting with exciting things that you guys are going to benefit from really things we dreamed about doing coming to fruition and you guys being a part of that so a shout out all you bar flies and and i really appreciate you all and everything you guys bring to the table so uh gains barelissimo nelson zeke all of you guys out there Thank you so much. Very nicely done, sir. I think you covered mine, 
actually covered all of mine. So uh, we're going to leave. Oh, it really? There. Yeah, you knocked it out of the park. You, uh, as you you're going to shout out my DMV ladies too, Aldo? <laughs> 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 Bitches. <laughs> Um, all right, you can listen, shout out Monsters of the Tri State. <laughs> oh, we're gonna meet up Mots. tomorrow. Mots. Mots. We're at, uh, you're meeting up with them for that game in Buffalo, Phil? No, I'm going, no, the, I'm going to the Giants game. Okay, but I'm also gonna check out, I've gotten approval from the wifey that I'm going no matter what to Scar's Bears barbecue that they have. So I'm going to go up there and meet up with a bunch of months, go to his barbecue, and I'll probably film some stuff, put it up. When is that? Is that get it going like that. Is That's that... in August. I don't know the exact date, but Scar's been shouting us out again. Aldo, I'm just going to reiterate at the end of the show. I fucking love people that aren't afraid to... When if something's good and, and you know it... You want to share it, share it. Why are you so afraid to call out a fraud or, or stand up for the truth? You don't like me. I'm going to laugh. That's fine. Let's laugh about it. But when it's truthful and there's validity in it and you feel it and you say it and it happens to be about the Bears bar room, I just, it sits very well with me. So I just kind of appreciate that people aren't afraid to shout out the product and the effort that Bears Girl, Aldo Gandia, Shane Marsaw, and everyone involved in the bar room is doing. And it means something to us. So thank you, Scar and company. Awesome. Hey, maybe I should give a shout out to my uh, next door neighbor who... Uh... <laughs> I got really sick this week. I had to fucking call the ambulance, man. I uh, oh really? Yeah. Wow. And, Should have uh, led the show off with this. <laughs> I was just gonna say, how is this closing the show? <laughs> so shout out to my uh -huh. neighbor who called family members to let them know that I was making a trip to the hospital because I fucking was vomiting and shitting all over myself like a eighty year old man. <laughs> Wow, way to bring in 60, eh, Aldo? Just, hey. just like another Saturday. <laughs> just like another <laughs> Saturday night. <laughs> so I mean, shout out to my neighbor. <laughs> and um, remember, if you drink, please do not drive and always bear down. <laughs> With your depends. Yes. <laughs> oh. So were you taking that? What's that pill for diarrhea? Emodium. 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 Was that your best friend? Well, the, doc what? the doctor told me not to take it because uh, she told really? me. Really? Yeah. When, when oh, you, you got to clean it out, she's saying. Yeah, exactly. Oh, God. Exactly. So let it flow. Let it flow. Clean it out. <laughs> let it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does what is Jared think about that? <laughs> I don't see anything fucking wrong with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I shit all the time. Dude, there's nothing worse, Aldo, than <laughs> getting sick like that and you're praying. Like, oh, I, man. That's my number one time I pray to God is when I'm feeling like that. And I'm on the toilet and I'm like, God, please let this stop. I'll do anything. <laughs> anything you want, I will do. It. But please, when he... the pain. <laughs> Hila, we have Hila's sound is... Hila's sound asleep right now, like most sane people, so I'll share this story. <laughs> she'll, never, she'll never listen to this. She got food poisoning. Oh, oh. my God. She, she's not one to complain at all. I'm the biggest baby in the world when it comes to shit like that. Well, she she got it, and Literally. I, went into, I went in to check <laughs> on her, and she wasn't in the bedroom, and I saw the light on in the bathroom, and I could hear her not really crying, but she wasn't loving life anyway. And I'm walking in the bathroom and I'm like, babe, are you okay? And she's like, no, I'm not. I don't have my pants on. And every time I puke, I've been shitting all over the floor. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
And she wasn't fucking lying, let me tell you what. She was puking and shitting. And <laughs> in our old house, we have a fucking heat vent that's down in the, oh. down in the floor. <laughs> yeah. So it was fucking disgusting. Yeah. So I'm like trying to drag her out to the garage to pressure wash her off because it was so fucking nasty. But yeah, so she knows the feeling out there. And actually, just I have to make sure she's never going to listen to this show yeah. ever. Yeah, you better oh, not. She God. Kill because me, then you're dead. Yeah, that's a that's a real thing though. You know. Both, oh my God. Yeah. It is real. Yeah, you ain't kidding. Oh, oh my God. It's not a good feeling. That's not some it. real shit. That Shane said. It sounds so fucking hot though. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Did you, ever, did you guys ever oh, see that God. Howard Stern show where some guy wanted a woman to vomit on her? On, on yeah, her? the vomit. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I'm a yeah. vomit lover. They have these fetish, <laughs> fetishes. Yes. What? The shit lover. Yeah. Just take a dump on me. Yeah, he lives in New York City. Oh, he'll like that could go be a out terrible to, drop. Right he'll there. go out to where the bars are, and he'll just wait out there for like the girls to come out when the bar closes, and they'll be puking all over the street and. He, like, gets off on it. It's all fucked up. Oh, gosh. That's Nasty. Nice. All right, then. He, he's Canadian. Right. Perfect way to say goodnight. <laughs> Bears go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a sudden urge to vomit. <laughs> yeah, Phil, stop talking. Stop talking. That's all, folks. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks very much uh, for a great show and a great meeting. And uh, we'll talk uh, Monday. By the way, we just went four hours. I know. <laughs> it's amazing, this connection, to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about it just now. I'm like, holy shit. We started no highlighters, no nothing. No, no highlighters, no, no nothing. No you know what? I, I will really let you know. Excited. There was No, no. There was no fucking show flow on Monday because I got home at what time? Like 7.30? Mm-hmm. So um, it is possible. We knew, no that. Oh. we knew that, BG. We yeah. knew it was I'm possible. I'm just saying. They're catching up, BG. Not, it's never going <laughs> to happen again. Never <laughs> going to happen again. But it is possible. Did you say catch up, BG? Catch up. <laughs> <laughs> Not on a hot dog. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm out of here. All righty. Bye. Love you, guys. Love you, too. Great Bye. meeting. Super excited. Shut the fuck up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Shane, I'm off tomorrow so I can keep you up. Thanks. <laughs> Have a great Bye. night, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye now. Which man and a poor man? I got the same wedding anniversary. Probably you they meet on Madison Avenue when they're shopping for their wives. So the poor man says to the rich man, Would you buy your wife this year? He says, I got her a huge diamond ring and a brand new Mercedes. Poor man says, Where'd you get her both for? Rich man says, if you don't like the diamond ring, she can bring it back in the Mercedes and still be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Rich man says to the poor man, where'd you get your wife this year? He says, I got her a pair of slippers and a dildo. <laughs> Rich man says, what'd you get her a pair of slippers and a dildo for? <laughs> poor man says, if she don't like the slippers, she can go fuck herself. <laughs>